Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Game of Thrones Winter's Coming. Um, today we are going to look at something different than the other times. I promise you guys that we would look at Alliance Mobilization. And I'll give some tips and tricks to how you can improve uh, your participation in Alliance Mobilization and what you can do to basically prepare for it as well. But before that, um, we have the second anniversary festival still going on. I hope everyone's collecting their uh, Kravas medals um, every day. Uh, make sure to do that. It will help you in the future. And uh, Honor Token, already talked about that last game, uh, last uh, video. It still has a very good influence on the on the game, in my opinion. Um, it's speeding up process for me in terms of equipment very fast, so I'm quite satisfied with that. And then we have the anniversary festival sign. Uh, it's relatively good as well. They revamped it so it gives different kinds of rewards, and you will end up with. Um, I believe it's uh, 10 rare medals at the end and some other stuff along the way. Plus you also get a free castle and we're going to take a look fast at the free castle. Um, it should be this one here, uh, Watchers of uh, Watchers Oath, which gives you hospital capacity and stone capacity, which is Stone capacity is kind of eh, but hospital capacity is always welcome, no matter how you play the game. More hospital means that you can have a bigger army, or at least that your little bit extra of your army survives uh, an attack if you do get attacked. But the really good thing about this specific castle is the expedition damage increase. Uh, do notice that it says active bonus here, so expedition damage increase is only active uh, if you actually have the, the skin on, si uh, on you, um, otherwise it won't uh, apply the bonus to when you attack. And The own bonus is always, it's like a passive bonus, it's always going to be there, if you have it on or not, it doesn't matter, it will still be there, but the active one, you will have to use that specific castle skin to get the boost. So before you're hitting your um, rebel leaders, make sure to switch to this specific castle if you have it and you'll get a slight increase in damage to them. Um, the other one you can use is the Dunes Fort, but both of them I believe gives the exact same and you can see it's also expedition damage. The only difference is that this makes it go a little bit faster when you go to it rather than this one, but if you're free to play player then I would highly recommend wear it whenever you kill rebel leaders, so you can get a little bit extra back for the motivation that you spent. But yeah, um, we can take a look at a nice mobilization right now. Um, a nice mobilization is running for us right now here, so the timing is pretty decent. The last update we had, they kind of revamped the rewards, so we can take a look at the rewards to see um, how it has changed. They have added in compasses, uh, we didn't have those before, I'm fairly sure. We did not have refinement uh, ore either. Um, we did also not have the tokens for Elite and Epic. Epic is also available. Um, let's see, did they add anything else? I'm unsure if Endurance was in there before. Four, but um, I believe it was, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, they added the random books uh, of wisdom also, which is nice. And the watchstones are there as well now. Honor banners are also there. Um, and I'm not sure if they added the warrior summons as well, but I think so. And then of course the mark of the true track. Um, so, uh, what's positive, what's negative? Uh, positive is they seem to have removed a lot of the items that uh, longer time players don't need anymore. Basically for the special buildings, uh, Book of Confession, uh, Bonnie Lenders Contract and such, I think it was called. Um, they have been removed, uh, experience has been removed as well, I believe. And there are like some cleanups here and there uh, that helps. Um, in regards. 
The problem, however, in exchange is they seem to have re made a small error in terms of um, balancing in the new items because getting 9 honor banners at 21 and then getting 10 honor banners at 24 not really great math and a lot of people I've seen have complained about the amount of uh, tokens that you can get from this and the amount of books and so on that it doesn't really match the previous rewards um, they however have seem to have increased the amount of gold you can get and the amount of speed ups you can get as well and they have I don't have any chest at high level so I can't really compare that um, the badge chests I think have been slightly nerfed I'm not 100% sure about that I believe 18 you could already get two or three but I'm not 100% positive um, diamonds is around the same if not slightly higher but it's nothing huge uh, they have added green badges now, I just realized that, which is also pretty nice. Uh, beforehand we had just more single grey badges, but that's fine. Um, but overall there is... I think they also have removed the material chest. But overall there is a slight nerf to the rewards in my opinion. Um, even though they have been cleaned up and you can get better things and everything there should be something useful for everyone on almost every single row now compared to before where one third of the rows maybe you couldn't get or pick something that was useful to you because everything you had on it was already either uh, not useful in terms of the buildings were already upgraded or it was just bad uh, rewards but I uh, can also see that the meat has been added as well um, but either way like they have added a bunch of new things they've taken out a bunch of useless stuff um, overall am I satisfied with it eh, questionable um, I believe they should have made they could have made it like certain tiers and we could basically pick out of each tier what we want or something like that um, could be great of course that would also open up the entire issue of getting basically tons of transnational relocations and so on so I don't know the system needs some uh, work still I think it's okay it's not f perfect but it's decent enough for me to still want to do the uh, alliance mobilization event and try to get maximum value out of it of course there will be people that have done all research and so on they will probably feel they don't they can't really pick out that much but then again I feel like alliance mobilization is also something meant for the more uh, alliance as a whole and not as a player alone um, you work as an alliance together to get uh, the rewards which uh, reminds me of the fact they haven't touched the placement rewards for alliance mobilization which is really unfortunate uh, I think personally they need to get an update uh, I don't think the rewards are really worth it um, personally I recommend people just to say if they get the max rewards they can from the points or the stages then just drop it there because spending a bunch of things to get a higher placement doesn't really give you any value back so um, yeah in terms of quests there are a bunch of quests as you can see uh, really good quests are, for example, the Rebuild Camp ones. Um, I'll probably take that if it's not taken already. Yeah, it was. Um, and generally, at least in AOT, we set it up so that we leave or we delete most of the quests that are on the 125 points and use those 125 points once and just keep the 150 and above and even among those we are very specific um, there is for example quests like merchant and that's fairly simple but when you get near the end of the event it's much easier for you to just re-roll it because most likely it's something that takes a lot of time most people get maybe 8 sometimes 12 a day if they can match it really well but that means that's basically something that will have to take more than 24 uh, or it's something that will take at least over 18 hours and 
that's something that can really speed up compared to the rebuild camp once mayor. You basically just do one camp and you basically get 175 points, which can be done in like 10 minutes. And so you have to, if you have to change out the quest and so on to get the maximum value out of it, reroll most low level, uh, low points quests. Um, I'm fairly sure if I go out and go in, then most of them will be re have been rerolled. Um, because the amount of points you get for it is simply not uh, worth it. And of course, among those quests that give more points, there's also certain things that you have to look out for. Um, just because a quest says, for example, here that it's recommended doesn't always uh, mean that it's recommended. Uh, in this specific case, it's decent um, because it, ha it, it only requires you to get 2.4 million points uh, to get, uh, or BR, uh, increased power, to basically get 200 points in exchange for the other quests here where you have to do 2 million uh, increase in BR to get uh, 175 points and getting 400k BR more. It's probably not that much of a difference, but I know there, for example, a 200 point quest that's not recommended, but that's basically being set at 3 million uh, BR increased for 200 points. So you have to basically find out uh, the system between the different quests that are there. You have to sort out the bad quests and keep the good quests. It's the same with the, all, all of the rank in top 70 X amount of time quest. All of those, no matter how many points they give, just remove them. They are extremely difficult to do, they are very time consuming, they are very resource consuming as well in terms of speed ups and so on. And the value you get back for them is simply not worth it. So you basically just decide to take them away. Uh, mysterious chests you can do for a certain amount of time, but I would say if there's uh, less than 48 hours left, Stop doing mysterious quests uh, or mysterious test quests as well. Just uh, re-roll them, leave them away, don't do anything with them. Um, because it takes far too long. And just like there's uh, power, uh, there's also for research. And I believe they are set up in the same way. Uh, highly recommend if there's one for 3 million, re-roll it. Keep the one for 2.4 instead, roll for that one. In terms of diamonds, it's the similar things. There are some that are recommended, but the only thing, reason to why they are recommended is because the quest countdown is longer, but the actual value that you get is higher. So, or the actual value that you have to pay for the diamond quest, for example, is higher, so it's not worth it. For example, there is, I believe there are two uh, 200 point quest diamonds, uh, diamond quests, and one of them where you have to pay 50k diamonds and has 24 hours, something like that. It's not that long. And then there is one where you have to pay 100k diamonds and you have uh, 48 or 72 hours, something like that. Uh, it will say that the one that where you have to pay 100k will be recommended while the other one is not, or something like that. And so you have to basically, if you have to refresh the questions so on, you have to find out what works for you. Um, quests that I can recommend. Uh, I can recommend if you have the diamonds for it. I do recommend doing the diamond quests, at least uh, 150 points, maybe 175 points one. If you have a lot of diamonds, you can do the 200 points one as well. Uh, just as long as you take those that are the low uh, cost ones uh, for the points. Uh, if you are free to play player, um, gathering is usually a decent uh, quest as well, if you're good at gathering at least, uh, have high gathering, uh, do that. Doesn't cost anything and you can get resources in and if you're worried about overfilling your castle with resources and stuff, just do, um, what's it called, uh, grain. Uh, grain takes longer to farm granted, but your troops will eat them most likely, so you won't have an overflow of uh, resources in your um, castle. Of course, there's um, the rebel camps one are fairly easy, either for spoils chests or doing X amount of rebel camps. Uh, easy for 
free to play players as well can do uh, low level camps and just storm through it. Um, usually there are some for 154 points, I believe there's one uh, where you have to do X amount of, uh, of um, camps, uh, so that's fairly easy. Uh, the power ones, if it's if it fits with your plans and so on, you can do it. If there's Tyrion events and so on going on, you can do it uh, to try and combine those. Otherwise, I would say if you're not having that many resources and saved up for it and so on, avoid them. Um, there's also the weirwood uh, quests. They are also fairly fairly easy to do, uh, and hearts usually don't cost that much either. In case you're a little bit uh, low on them, so you can do those if you save up a couple of hearts as well. Um, keep in mind that the weirwood memories are separate from the weirwood quests, so you don't get the same value. Uh, you don't get uh, value from weirwood doing weirwood memories uh, at the weirwood quests. So. Um, mysterious que uh, chests you can do, but it's going to take a long time. Uh, if you have an alt or someone that's good at using helps in the alliance, then you can do that as well. Um, so I would like, like I said, uh, try to maximize your points as high as possible. Um, 150, 175, 200 point quests. Uh, we usually leave up the easy 125 point quests, which means the weirwood quest or the Swords chest quests and stuff like that, and that way we can kind of um, get a high uh, quest, uh, what's it called, completion uh, rate. And of course, uh, plan for it a little bit in advance, save up some hearts, uh, you maybe save up some of your uh, resource gathering uh, buffs um, that you can get from. Here, uh, you can see here, gathering speed boost, uh, I have for 7 days and 24 hours, if that's required. Uh, if you're going hard in on that, I believe there are some gold transfer quests as well that you can do. Uh, if you have a lot of gold, you can transfer it to the bank or your alliance bank, and that way you can basically get it back if you have a lot of gold. Uh, or an alt for that matter. So, there are certain quests you can do. Um, and if you want to get the maximum points, then I would recommend to make it so that you aim for your alliance to get around uh, 1,200 points on all members across the board. Those that do extra will just make it easier for the bottom part. So, and like here in AOT, we have also people that are doing over 2,000 2000 points and stuff. So. Keep that in mind, um, and uh, yeah, try to plan things accordingly. Uh, I would recommend. I usually did that that I would save up things for this specific event, then just take it out. There's also alliance quests and stuff you can do, um, but that depends. The value of that depends a lot on your VIP level. If you're low VIP level, you won't have as many quests, and you will have to use more of them to get uh, the specific number of quests required to actually get points for. So. Um, but yeah, uh, I believe that was a general idea of how alliance mobilization work, a general guideline about how our opinion about how the new um, rewards are and a small update on the second anniversary event and how to use the castle. So I believe we have a match later, uh, Siege of Winterfell. Uh, my last recording fucked up, uh, sorry about the language, messed up, didn't really go well and I'm trying again uh, today to see if I can get this specific match captured. I'll probably cut it down in small parts, I'll see what I can do with it. Uh, I think a one hour each video is a bit too long, I'll probably see if I can compromise it at maybe 15-20 minutes, something like that, but we'll see about that. Either way, um, if you want guides for to specific things or so, write down in the comment. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you want. And of course, if you want to play the game, look at the Discord, look up the music, whatever. Everything will be down in the description below. And yeah, that's going to be all for me this time. So take care, have fun, and good luck with everything. Bye, guys.